All right, so in the last video I showed how to add a database to a project in this one, uh, I would like to go ahead and and Visual Studio here. If you want to use SQL Server Manager, you can. Uh, I'm going to do it all in Visual Studio because this is kind of a one one shot deal, if you will. Uh, so I want to add a table and maybe a view or a couple other things to our database here so that we can go ahead and start displaying records to users, right? And in this case, let's go ahead and add a new table and I'm going to go ahead and it's going to pull up a couple different things here. It's going to build a view or it's going to build like a designer and then it's going to have some code information here and actually um, I'm going to close my properties windows here and I'm just going to go <clears throat> you can do this. You can do this either visually or programmatically. I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, programmatically here. And let's go ahead and do a couple things here. Uh, not what I wanted to do. So we have an ID here, and I'm just going to leave it ID, uh, and it's going to be an integer, and this will be our identity. Okay. And then we'll have our uh, username, right? And I'm going to do a var, var char, var car, however you want to pronounce it. And we'll do that 100. And we'll do a password here. Uh, I do max because if you're doing hashes, they can be crazy long. And you should almost always, if you're going to do a password, it should just be a one-way hash. You should never have it encrypted or decrypted. Uh, if the user needs to reset their password, they're going to have to completely restart. That's the only way you want, you can be almost completely secure. So uh, we're going to have an email, and uh, this will be another our car of 50. <coughs> okay, and this is going to be unique, right, because we don't want... Well, we'll add a constraint at the end, but we'll make our email unique because we don't want multiple uh, emails for different usernames, right? Uh, and maybe then we can do a phone and actually we'll do this on hundred okay and let's do like last login last log we'll just call it that and this will be a date time okay and now we need to make a couple constraints here. Our username, so we're going to say constraint uh, pk username. We're going to call this uh, just a table of users. Users username and uh, primary key and username because it's going to be on that column. And we're going to say constraint uq users underscore email unique. And we're going to say email because we only want one type of email. <coughs> and that's all there is going to be to it. So we have an identity column, which will increment by one every single time. Starts at one. Uh, we have a username, which down here we made uh, username our primary key. Uh, so there can only be one username. We have a password here, uh, and that will be for this user. We have an email, uh, we have a phone, and we have a last logged in date. And we'll start with that. And all right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit update. And let's see here. So I'm going to hit update database. You can see it's generating some scripts for us here. It's creating the update preview, right? And that's all there is to it. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to refresh this. And now we have our users table. Pretty handy, right? So uh, that's all there is to that. And then let's go ahead and add a view really quick. And we're going to create a view and we're going to call this uh, user settings view okay Oop, I keep hitting control s sorry about that I'm used to it uh, and it's going to want a table name here and for us we just made a table users and we want to display users right 
And actually, we don't want every single column. We just want the basic settings that a user might want to see. So they might want to see their username. They might want to see their email. They might want to see their phone. And they might want to see the last logged in, right? So uh, basically everything but their identity, uh, their identity column, their ID. And they don't want to see the, uh, and we don't want to display the password, the hashed password. We don't ever want to display to the user. Uh, how the password is being stored um, because that can create some large security holes uh, and that's going to be it so uh, we created dbo user settings view so this is the name here and you say as and then you say your select statement what will the view be on and views essentially are projections um, from the original table so uh, essentially what it does is it does a select on that table of whatever is in that instance and then displays that information. So uh, if changes are being made in the background, that won't be reflected in a view. And maybe that's a little over your head right now. So I'm going to hit update again. And you can see here there's no issues. Uh, sometimes, really quick, uh, you will see that it talks about the difference between one word and another is just uh, the case sensitivity. Um, do not worry about that. That will not affect your queries or your database or anything. If you want, go ahead and fix it up. Um, I usually don't. So there, I just hit update database much faster this time. I'm going to close this out. Uh, I'm going to refresh both of these so we can see what we've got. We have a view, we have a table, and then uh, we'll leave it at that and then we'll start making stored procedures. So. That's going to conclude this video of how to add a table and a view.